Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author, and welcome to my quilting studio. We are going to be doing something really, really fun today. Um, we are going to be digging through our scraps, and this is how I store most of my scraps. I will cut them, and then I put them in these little bowls that I pick up from the Dollar Tree. Um, these are my two and a half inch finished squares. Um, I do use my AccuQuilt Go. Um, I go me to cut those. Um, it's just easier to cut them on that, I find. But I'll show you some other ones. Here's another one that I have. Um, these are tri half square triangles that I've done that I'm not certain that we'll be working with these today, but there's a lot of them. I have lots and lots of scraps cut everywhere. So this project is really going to be used by using up your scraps. And so as you can see, I keep all my scraps in this neat little bin here. I also have some fabrics that I keep in here that I need to use. However, for today's, you're just gonna need some of your own scraps that you have laying around. So I've already gone ahead and made our first one, which is a four patch, which is really cute. I love this fabric. So when I got my craft room finished, I actually put up a wall above my embroidery machine that says quilt. And I wanted to make a bunch of little mini quilts over there and just hang them on that wall. And I wasn't sure how I was going to do it or what patterns I was going to use for it, but I think I've figured it out. And that's what we're gonna make today are these little mini quilts. But I'm going to show you how to quilt them a much easier way and so we're just gonna jump right in and get started. All right, so just in case you need a refresher of the wall that I'm talking about, this is the one where I spray painted the letters that say quilt, and um, I told you I did them in that pink glitter, <laughs> and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do once it dried. I didn't even know that I really liked it that much. So um, I'm gonna get creative now, and I feel like now is the time to start adding to this wall a little bit to make it look more of like a, a quilting studio. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, it looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this out just a little bit more since it's got a little bit of a crinkle. It didn't come completely out when I pressed the first Put them part. right sides facing each other. And I'm just gonna pin. Okay, so now I have them all pinned, and I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine, and I'm gonna sew all the way around this square with a quarter of an inch. So now that we have everything sewn together, I just went ahead and cut diagonally. So I cut in an X position so that I have something that looks like this. And now when I put, push these open, This is what I have. And so this is what's gonna make up our pinwheel. And you wanna make sure you're pressing to the darker side. And then you will press these with your iron. You'll press them open. And you will do that next. You would press these open. And then you come back here and you would put them on your mat. And you would get your little square template here. I'm gonna have one of those. These come in so handy. So what I do is I line up my seam that I created on my, on my little square here. So that's my seam. And I like to line up with this line right here on that seam. And then I move it to this three inch by three inch mark. So that's what I will do here. And this is how I trim up the squares to get them to where I need them to be. This will also trim off those dog ears that we've been talking about. I think I need a different blade in my, 
rotary cutter. Just gonna lay this down again on the three by three right here. And then cut. And now my block is perfectly trimmed down. Okay, so once you have that done, then you want to take your, you'll lay out your pattern again so that you know which side is gonna be your top and which side's gonna be your bottom. This is going to be my top side. And I know this because I marked it with a blue pen on that side. This is going to be the bottom half. And now, since I've been messing with this, I bet I probably need to redo this. So, I'll just show you here. I'll move these down a little bit. So that's what the pinwheel is going to look like. So now what I want to do is pin the top again. You want to make sure that you nest these two together, these two seams. And you can do that just by sliding them in together. You'll feel it lock. And the reason is because one seam is going this way and this seam is going the other direction. And that is what is going to give you a perfect point. So you definitely want to keep those together. And then you're going to want to just pin the rest. And then what I'll do is I'll go and I'll sew a quarter of an inch seam down here. And then this is my bottom. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to nest my seam there and I'm going to pin because I don't want to lose that I'll sew that a quarter of an inch down as well Okay, we're going to start with the top. And then this one is the bottom. All right, I wasn't paying attention, so I'll just show you how I just do this. did this is really good oh, I think I did okay so we do not want to cut this little string that is between here we want to leave that there because this is going to help us put this together so I'm going to press to the darker side just using my fingers to do that. Then I will take it and I will flip it. Right sides together, leaving that little piece right there in between, leaving it sandwiched. And then I will nest those together. I'm just gonna slide them right up together right there until I fill them lock and then I will put a pin right there in the center and then I'm going to pin my other pieces 
over here. And now I'm just going to sew straight down with a quarter inch seam all the way down here. This goes very quickly, actually. This is a really fun like afternoon project if you're just kind of bored and you're just wanting something to do. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and trim that little piece right there. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just gonna give that little piece a snip. And now it's gone, okay? And now I'm going to open up my pinwheel. And I'm going to press this open flat because this is so bulky. There's so many different seams running through here. It gets very, very bulky. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press this flat. I'm gonna take it to the iron and do that. Real All quick. right, so one more trim. Now I am gonna show you something and I'm gonna leave it alone just because I want you to see that it's not that big of a deal. But my center did not turn out perfect, perfect. And that's okay. I'm fine with it. It's good enough. Um, I have made perfect pinwheels and I have made not perfect pinwheels. And it doesn't matter. A pinwheel is a pinwheel. Unless it's like really, really off. But this is not really, really off. And if your pinwheel turns out like this too, I want you to be proud of it. Because there's nothing wrong with this. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to trim this up now and I'm going to take this ruler here and I'm going to make it two and a half inches now. So all I'm going to do, since this is a two and a half inch ruler, is I am just going to find the two and a half inch, or I'm sorry, I'm just gonna take the edge of this ruler and I'm just going to lay it down on my center seam line and then I'm going to just trim. I will do this to all four sides I am lining up on just the rat um, on the three inch line here. I'm putting that on my cent on my middle seam here, but I'm lining up the edge of this ruler on the larger seam. If you wanted yours to be bigger or smaller, you could adjust accordingly. I know this can be one of the most trickiest parts of doing stuff because of the, the points that you have going, but this is how you do it. And keep the same um, shape for all of your, your triangles here. Okay, we're gonna be using the Rakoma to quilt our little squares, and they are currently having a big sale all the information will be linked down below. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna actually quilt this with our embroidery machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a fat quarter as the backing and I'm going to use my largest size hoop that I have available. And this one is, I believe, eight by 12. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just, I'm gonna press this, but I just wanna show you here for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna put the backing down first and then I will grab um, some batting here. And I'll just kind of figure out how much of this I need here. Now you will have leftover when you're doing this. You're not gonna use all of the, the fat quarter. Um, so you'll need to go ahead and put that in your scrap box for another day. Like I said, this project is really, really super scrappy. And so that's how I'm gonna do my batting, although I'm gonna put the scrim side down. So you're gonna want your nice side facing down with your fabric. 
and then you're going to want your your batting to be down like that now you can just stop here if you want to you don't have to go any further but i do like to use a piece of um no sew mesh stabilizer i just feel like it helps to stabilize the piece that we're working on a little bit better and it doesn't take much time so i'm just going to lay that there and then i will take my little mini quilt pieces that i have going on here and i'm going to place them right here in my hoop area now i know there's a lot of fabric in here but like I said, you can use the rest of it for scraps. I also have a bigger one that I went ahead and made, which looks like this, which I think turned out so cute. So this one's gonna go up top and these two are gonna go towards the bottom on my quilt wall. But with this one, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be able to at least get the majority of it quilted and I will be able to. And so what I did was I went to creativefabrica.com and I will link down below in the description box so you can get the same design. And Rakoma also has their Chroma software um, as well that you can use if you're looking to use something a little more on the advanced side. And so I just kind of connected them together in my software and it's just gonna go ahead and stitch out on, on here. Okay, I pressed our fat quarter that's on the back and then I went ahead and just layered again like I showed you before. And I used some 505 spray to go ahead and hold down my little squares on here. And now we're ready to take it over and quilt the design on top. Okay, we're gonna try this again. So, on the mini ones, I actually messed up and chose the wrong design and then the power went out. So, yeah, hopefully this time it won't. These are the correct, this is the correct design with the squirrels. So, I will just embellish and add to the other ones, but for um, this video's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we're gonna quilt the, the larger um, square. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on that.
absolutely love the way that this turned out. So this is how you quilt with a tin needle machine. Um, I worked with the Rakoma EM1010, and if you look down below in the description box, you'll get the links for that. If you wanna save an additional 10%, please use my code ANISA10, and you will save 10% on non-sale items. I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. If you'd like to follow me on social media, links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to share, that's great because sharing is caring. And don't forget to click the little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool video. And keep on crafting. See you next time. Bye-bye.